Hello and welcome back to the Gorilla Biker. Today we're going to be changing the uh, chain and sprockets on my 2011 Honda CBF 1000 GT. I also have a helper today who is learning um, and maybe taking over little bits and pieces of the CB500 project because you know I just keep crashing my bikes and I have to fix those. Well, I crashed I crashed one bike, but you know, um, yeah. And we're going to call him Blister. He picked the name himself, that's the best part. I gave him about 10 seconds to come up with a name and he picked Blister. Um, so just to run through what I'm putting on here, I'm putting on a 530 VX chain, which is from DID. Uh, it's just a heavy duty replacement chain. We're putting on a stainless, uh, yeah, stainless? A stainless steel uh, front and rear sprocket from JT Sprockets. Everything standard, I'm not changing any gearing, nothing like that because I don't want to, um, pretty much. I know a lot of people, make these accelerate slower so that they rev lower and you have a higher top speed essentially. But if it was anything, I'd be increasing acceleration because that's where the fun is. But this one, this bike is perfect for the way I ride. So it's staying like that. Anyway, if you want to see what we're going to do in this video and maybe catch a glimpse of Blister's ankle as he holds the back brake, stay tuned. The reason I'm changing this uh, is because I tightened this chain the other day to spec. This chain insta stretches now. It's a, uh, it's what we'd call in an operative term. What word would you call it, Dave? Dave, 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 Dave blister. What would you call it? Nothing I can say is uh, PG. It's all right. I can bleep it out. It's yeah, <laughs> correct. It is definitely. So next, what we need to do once you, if, if really, no, no wonder you call it blister. <laughs> You're like a blister, a constant unpleasantness that if you pop it, it gets worse. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. You named yourself. Yeah, um, that's a compliment. So once you take off your lower fairing, if you have a lower fairing, if you don't, you don't need to worry about that bit. There are two bolts um, that hold on your, your master cylinder actuator boy. You have to take that off to get to this cover, which covers the front sprocket. Behind this front sprocket is going to be absolutely hideously dirty, but that's okay. Um, you can also choose to pop one of these off, whereas I generally break them when I try to do that. So instead of that, I'm actually just gonna take off the spline connector and pull it out. I, I'm okay with that. You don't have to do it that way. i say it'll be dirty under there, but I like it like that. I don't though. Oh. But you know the camera's still recording, so that's going in. Ignore the fact the gasket ripped. We're not gonna worry about that. We're just gonna not think about it and I'll get a new gasket at some point. Although, that's probably like... The... It'll be fine! It'll probably... Probably be fine. Then what you want to do before you take off the spline connection, if you're taking off the spline connection like I am, just draw on your marker mark, which my one is really bad, but just so you get back on in roughly the same place. Next we want to... Really making some noise <sighs> Typical then we want to take off these bolts here off the actual cover front sprocket cover I have no idea do you need to take this bit off but uh Seems like the fastest way to get stuff out of my way. Aha! Actually not that dirty. The CBF is self-cleaning. So next what we want to do, is that still recording? There's a little red dot up in the top? Mm -hmm. Excelente! Next what we want to do is get blister uh, to hold the back brake as we loosen this. In a minute. In a minute. In a minute. Uh, also, what I would advise doing right about now, oh, no. <laughs> I never put it in gear before I disassemble the gear linkages. Anyway, uh, if you're an intelligent person, before you do any of this, put the bike in gear. Not gonna happen now. <laughs> I probably could still get it in gear if I really needed to, but I don't think I need to. So I'll get Blister to hold back brake, crack this off, take off the rear wheel, take off the chain, when we cut it. Uh, could break the link, I'm not going to because I'm lazy. Uh, take the rear wheel off, change the two sprockets, new chain on. We'll also just need to shorten the chain slightly. Let's get to it. You're pushing down on it good, yeah? Okay, so we're going to put it in here. God damn it. Yay! 
we have Captain Lucy. Okay, so now that the front sprocket is cracked and you can kind of see Blister, he's gone though. Uh, thank God. <laughs> you don't want to see him, he's a horrible sight. Now that we have the front one cracked off, which is 14 millimeter metric, we need to loosen off the back wheel and then just literally take the back wheel out, cut the chain, get everything out, resize our links, we're good to put it all back together. I can't stop burping! I can't stop burping. So the two numbers you want for this one are 23 and 27. 27 being the left hand side, 23 being the right hand side. Then to loosen off your rear uh, chain, chain tensioners, you want a 14 and a 12. The 14 is your inside, 12 is your lock nut. Just loosen off your lock nut a lot. Um, you don't need to worry about this because yeah. Essentially, you're gonna to have to retighten all this anyway. And you can proceed to take off your back wheel. And there you go, back wheel is off. Front sprocket's ready to come off. Then we just have to cut the chain and put it all back together, essentially. I forgot to turn on the camera for hipster sparks. Really sorry about that. And there you go. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is give everything inside that sprocket cover a really quick clean, because it's actually quite clean. And then we're gonna measure up the new chain beside the existing chain, because I think we have to shorten it a little bit. So, just to show you, this is my old front sprocket. Please focus on front sprocket. Thank you, camera. You can see there's like hooking on this sprocket these kind of scoops here, that's bad. I also measured these the new one against the old one. As you can see, they're a perfect match. Bye bye old one, don't need it. This is what they should look like. Beautiferous, nice rounded nubs. So we're gonna put that onto the bike now. And not, not torque it down, just literally get it on. So the number's facing out always. We're not gonna torque it down or anything. We're literally just gonna tighten the bolt in gently for when we run the chain back through in a second. And I'll have to take it out of gear to do that. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done that. So next what we're gonna do is change off the rear sprocket, which is right there in front of your faces. Um, hopefully I'm gonna crack this now since my elbows aren't broken anymore uh, without a hammer drive. But basically, these are bolts that you don't want. So when I did the Jixer, you would have seen it. You had bolts that were like, you know, kind of not fully captive. These bolts go all the way through. If you break them, it's bad. So be gentle. <laughs> I know it says to tighten these to like 108 Newton meters in the manual. I'm gonna tighten them to 70 because 70 should hold them. And 108 just sounds far too much for my liking. 70 is always a good number. It's just one I like to pick. So that's what I'm going for, and the front is about 50. The front sprocket's about 50. So, new plan, we're putting back on the old rear sprocket, probably should have checked that before I ended all the bolts. Um, but the old sprocket's a 43 tooth sprocket, the new sprocket is a 41 tooth. Um, so the chain's actually the right length, everything's the right length, changing this in the future is not difficult. So we're just gonna put it back on for now and do the chain. We have the new front sprocket. The front sprocket was really bad. The rear sprocket actually doesn't look that bad anyway. So not too big a deal. <sighs> okay, so now that that's through, we can pop this back on and get the back wheel back on so we can tighten our new master link. There you go. Okay, so now that the rear wheel is back on, we can feed our chain through. 
with difficulty. Yeah. Yeah. And basically where you want these to meet is at the rear end of your sprocket. Oh, this chain is so much tighter than the other one. So this is our mask swing. What we get with this is four seals. Two have to go on before you shove it through the pins, which we'll do in a second. And you want to grease it up. Should be a little tear right there. And you want to put on some grease in here because the thing about these is, is once you grease them and push them in, this is, this is the only time these young ones will ever get grease. So you want to get plenty on, just lube it up. I'm just getting lovely shots of your meaty fingers. Meaty? <laughs> they look meaty as hell on the camera. They're dainty fingers. So you get plenty of grease with them and the thing is you want to use like half of it now and then we'll use half of it later. So follow me this way, please, sir. So have your links positioned like this. Can you see that? Have your links positioned like this in your rear sprocket. And now the fun bit, trying to get them to uh, home. There we go. So once you're at this point, now you need to put on the two next um, gasket mm. O-rings and then push on your plate. But first, before we do that, how I do this is I will measure the thickness of one of these plates. So 22.3, 22.16, So if we aim for like 22.4 when we press this on, we're good. What you wanna do, ow, mind the knee, is grease up these young buttons here. Use up the last of your grease. You're not saving it for anything. Unless you want to use some later yourself. I'm not judging if you do. And put on your next O-rings. Or whatever they are, they might be X-rings. And then realize that you lost your faceplate somewhere. So you want to get the writing my one says Japan, facing out. And just press that on with your fingers for now. And now we're gonna to have to get the actual press tool. So I'll be back in a sec. So then what you need is one of these. Uh, it's just gonna press the plates together. Um, that's what we're gonna use now. So this sits over the back. These are just to protect the little uh, rivets, basically, so you don't, you don't crush the rivets on the back before we want to. We are gonna crush them in a second. Um, so yeah. Let's get to it. And you only need the rough adjust. There's a fine adjust in here. That's for the pin. I've never used the pin tool in my life because you generally don't need it. Um, so we're going to do that now. And so what I'm keeping an eye on here as well is just looking at the plate physically uh, as I look in at it from this direction because you can actually see it crush in. So let's do a quick old measurement and see how close I got. <laughs> Couldn't make that up, 22.4. I, I kid you not. 22.3. 22.44. I have good eyes. <laughs> I have really good eyes. Don't you wear glasses? Shut up. <laughs> Not telling people in the room about my secrets, Dave. Wow. Yeah, now, just, now they all know your name. No, you've said it like 10 times. <laughs> Could bleep it out. And I would have bleeped out if you... Oh, ah, ah. Got attacked. Come over here, camera person. So then, what you do is put back in this little bolly press. So we need to put back in this one from this side, which lets the rivet on the far side sit into it. I just screw that in the whole way. And the old ball bearing side, which I'll just take this out to show you properly. And then you need the ball... Ooh, I'm dirty. I suppose, yeah, doesn't even matter, does it? And the ball bearing side needs to thread into this side because that's what actually crushes the new rivet out. Down here, once again, what I'm gonna do is measure the width of our rivets, which are 
five point. Oh, whoops, no, missed. Go again. Five point four. Five point three five. And we want to take off, or we want to widen them by about 0.5. So if this is 5.34, this is 5.4, we're gonna to go to like, well, we can go to 5.8 really on both, and that should be good enough. Uh, 5.8, 5.9. You don't wanna to go too tight. If you go too tight, this link becomes a stiff link, whereas right now it's not. So anyway, to begin, you position, you can feel the back plate sit over it, and then just wind it in by hand till you see you're sitting in the center of the ribbon. That's really important, okay? The first twist here, this is gonna do very, very little, as in pretty much nothing. Give it, I usually go one, tighten it another one, like that, and then give it one more to the begin. And then that was my shoulder cracking. And back it back out. And check it. And this is just, this is a slow process. Like I said in the last video, I would recommend taking your time with this because if you over tighten this, you have to change the entire master link, which is a pain. So I would just recommend taking your time. There's no need to rush this at all. Okay, so now we have the two rear boys to 5.8. Everything's running through smooth. So all I have to do now, I already torqued this back up with the blister. And now all I have to do is tighten the chain and reassemble everything, which you don't want to see and we'll talk about it when I'm done. But basically that's it, it's not too bad. It doesn't take too long. Um, it's just a pity we didn't have the right sprocket for the rear, but that can all be sorted very easily. And now I've done, I've actually done 500 plus kilometers on this uh, since I did the chain. So now I'm just tightening it again. And tightening the chain is not something that's too difficult to be honest. And if you own a bike with a chain, you're gonna get really used to doing it. Um, so for me, I kind of end up doing it a lot more than I'd like <laughs> because you know, I ride my bike quite a bit. Um, but as well, I always find that when you put on a brand new chain, you do get that initial bit of slack a little bit quicker, um, which is okay. You know, it's just, it's a case of being prepared for that and kind of just being ready to take the play out. Now, the other thing is you'll see I'm tightening this chain on the center stand. Technically, you're not supposed to do that. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing it. It's just basically I've tightened the chain on this bike so many times. I kind of know by feel where the chain should be on the center stand to get it where it needs to go when I put it back on the ground. This bike seems to be a little bit heavy for my, my rear stand, my paddock stand. Um, the best way to tighten the chain is on the paddock stand. Anyway, I'll do this and then we'll jump to close out the video. And there you go. So that's the chain fitted. New sprockets fitted apart from the rear one, but I can do that when I get a new one. 43 tooth. The front is a 16, the rear is 43. Um, chain bedded in, you know, uh, the new tool, uh, the new master link pressed into place and tightened, bedded in and tightened. So takeaways, you can definitely do this. Couple of watch outs um, and I'll, you'll see B-roll now. There's a little pin down here, be careful of that. Uh, I nearly mistreaded it. It's going into quite a soft material and I did have to re-tap it a little bit, but it, it worked out fine. Um, your gear change shaft thing, absolutely fine, easy to take off. No need to be concerned about that. I saw some people concerned. The clutch master cylinder, also absolutely fine. Just be careful. Don't pull your clutch while you have it off. It might be just a bit harder to get back on. The cover's easy to get off. The sprockets are really easy to fit. It's actually very, it's a very easy chain to fit in comparison to some I've done in the past. Um, not that I've ever done anything majorly complicated. The jigsaw just was a little bit more involved, a little bit more there. Um, the main things to do are do not, do not tighten the rear sprocket to 108 Newton meters, whatever it is in the spec and service manual. You will definitely tear out um, your, your, your hub threads. Uh, why they did that is it's probably from from factory. It's probably new stretch bolts and new hub. You will destroy it. So just just don't. Just don't do it. It's not worth it. Cross treading something in, in or pulling treads out of a hub is is, is not going to be fun. Uh, front sprocket's easy to fit. 
nothing major. I, I tighten that to what 55 newton meters. I think it's 58 in the service manual. Um, and you know, all I ever do is I crush my master link uh, rivets by about 0.5 mil. 0.4 is fine. Once they're spread out, they're not going to come out. That's the thing. There's not that much lateral load on those. Um, there's a little bit, but there's not that much. That's why, like on dirt bikes and stuff like that, you just see the push on uh, clips on the master links. Would I use it on my road bike? Probably not. I, I know a lot of people do use them, a lot of people find them fine. Personally, I just wouldn't. Um, I'm not saying I'm right, I'm not saying the other people are wrong, it's just I wouldn't use them, that's all. Uh, so, do I think you can take this on? Absolutely. The main thing to remember is, if you're gonna take on a job like this, you need to get a good chain breaker and riveter. Very important, if you don't get a decent one, you're gonna have a nightmare and you're gonna waste even more money throwing away master links and chains and whatever else. Um, I have used that particular riveter, which I bought for like 80 euro, it's an Oxford one. I think I've used that five times now, maybe six? Six, so I've, I've done three of my own bikes and three of other people's bikes. Actually, sorry, I did one of my bikes twice, so I've done, I've done seven. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. If you're gonna invest in one, it is going to pay you back as you go, you know, you, you, you save you save a lot of money, you save a lot of money. Effectively, it's cost me the parts plus, I don't know, like 10 euro per bike, basically 12 euro per bike um, to, to, to actually, you know, invest in that that breaker and riveter. Um, so it is a worthwhile investment, so it is, it is good to get a good one. Um, personally, the reason mine has lasted so long, you'll hear a lot of people break their, um, their push pins. That's for people who are breaking chains. I don't break chains, I just cut them off. Um, I know I'm not gonna reuse them, I just cut them off. And that's how I think mine has, has the longevity it does have. And I always try to buy the chains to size. Sometimes you can't get the chains to size. Fair enough. Then you might need to use your push pin, in which case you might break some. So in that case, it's important to look for the tool that has replaceable push pins. Some of them are harder to get because some of them are like limited run cheaper versions. So, at that point, it might be even worth going to a higher price point so that you have the spare parts, like a mechanic grade one. But that's it. Um, quite an easy job to do. I'm gonna let that dry off. I just clean my chain and then I'm gonna re-lube it. And yeah, then we're good to go for hopefully another 25,000 kilometers on this chain. Uh, will pop on the new rear sprocket when I get it because using an older rear sprocket, even though that one looks okay, will accelerate the wear on your chain. So you don't want to do that. Ideally, you're far better off um, putting on new sprockets when you change your chain. I know a lot of people will use two chains to a set of sprockets. Personally, the cost of the sprockets really isn't that much um, in comparison to the chain and stuff. So I think if you're doing these jobs yourself, it's very worthwhile changing all three together. Front, rear sprocket, and chain. Very, very worthwhile. Otherwise, yes, you can change uh, gener You can change a chain without changing the sprockets. It's just not something I personally do. I change everything together. But I am a little bit anal about maintenance anyway. I have a box of new bits for the Suzuki as well before it's next track day. New spark plugs, new oil, new oil filter, stuff like that. And I also have spare brake pads for it now as well, just in case. So yeah, that's kind of it. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever about this job, please do not hesitate to ask me in the comments. I can make shorter videos and try help you out there. Even stuff on Instagram, I can do that. I just can't do it if I don't know. It's a question you have. So do leave, com leave comments in the, the comments section, ask some questions if you need some help. Um, otherwise, honestly, I think this is like a three out of five difficulty job to approach. It's patience. Patience, patience, patience with doing the chain. Don't rush things. Don't push the, push the face plate too far. Don't crush the rivets too much. That's what's gonna get you. But like I said in the last video that I did the chain on the Jixer, even if you do that, you just can put on a new master link. It's not the end of the world. You haven't ruined the chain. Um, so yeah, that's it really. Um, if you've watched, thank you very much for watching. As always, a very special thank you to my patrons. Uh, I know one or two of you have a CBF, so I hope this is helpful uh, for you. And yeah, until next time, thank you again for watching. Adios. Outro crew. Gold chains are the best chains. I'm just saying, gold chains are the best chains. It makes me want to keep them clean because they're bling for my bike. I don't care what you think. They're, they're, gold chains are great. What color? If you could have any color chain in the world, what would it be? Hmm? Bye. Also, Weems remains awesome. Yeah, hope I get to meet him one day and flip and shade drain and all then. <laughs>